Welcome to the San Gorgonio chapter trail talk series. Series. My name is John St. Clair. I'm the Zoom host of the trail talk series. And uh, before we get into our presentation, I have a few ground rules to go over. Uh, first of all, uh, if you haven't already muted, please mute yourself. And I'm looking here at the participants. Participants, it looks like right now, everybody is muted except for me and our speaker, Julianne. So that's good. Um, if you have questions to ask our speaker, uh, we would ask that you write them in the chat section down at the bottom of your screen. There's a little talking bubble icon. If you click on it, it opens up a little window. Uh, the default is to send your uh, chat message to everyone, and that's fine. So leave it set at that. You just type it in and press uh, enter or return, and it will show up in the uh, chat box. And uh, Carla and I will be uh, monitoring that to be able to relay questions to Julianne, our speaker. Uh, after the meetings, all over, um, then you can unmute yourself and ask questions or whatever after the presentation is over. So tonight's topic is uh, hikes and fitness walks in Riverside and Corona. And I, I, I will mention before I introduce our speaker, uh, next month's program is called Winter Hikes in the San Gabriel Mountains. And I'm going to do that one. And actually, it's that's a little misleading. That title might make you think I'm doing snowshoeing in the mountains, but it's actually low elevation winter and early spring uh, hikes in the San Gabriel Mountains. But that was too long for me to put that in the title. So uh, I'm going to be talking about hikes that I actually lead during winter and spring, early spring, when there's too much snow up high to safely hike at high elevation. And this year, spring uh, should be beautiful. Be, with all the rain, the waterfalls are full and there should be lots of beautiful flowers. Okay, so tonight's topic, hikes and fitness walks in Riverside and Corona, is going to be presented by Julianne Anderson. And Julianne is a uh, outings leader in the San Gregonio chapter. And she's one of the three members of the trail talk committee that plans out these uh, presentations and presents them to you. And I will unspotlight me and put the spotlight on Julianne and she can begin her talk. Thank you, John. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, and in advance, thank you again, uh, John, for doing such a spectacular job in hosting these trail talks and doing all the technical work. And thanks also to Carla Kellums, our, our third member of our, uh, our trio here, uh, our Trail Talk committee. Uh, trail Talk was Carla's idea and she's always fabulous and has great ideas and has facilitated some beautiful Trail Talks. Um, and she's here tonight with us. So um, with that, I am going to share my screen. Go. to and here we are this this is uh, as john mentioned uh winter fitness walks and hikes in riverside and corona uh and beginning with a, a beautiful introductory shot there of the mount rubido uh hike which is one of our featured hikes and walks uh, this evening um well, some of the things we're going to be discussing tonight, and I hope you take away, um, since it's January, many of us are starting to, you know, uh, finish up the uh, the cookies and cakes of the holidays and start thinking about maybe uh, a little bit of fitness training, maybe getting into shape for some things that we want to do this spring and summer. So this is a perfect time. Um, winter in our area is spectacular, as, as you could see today, snow on the mountains, um, beautiful walks in our areas uh, here at low altitude. So uh, good reasons to come to Riverside County. 
Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit uh, in Western Riverside County. Uh, we, we have relatively flat hikes and walks with wonderful views of uh, the, the winter environs here in, in the inland and in the San Gregorio chapter. Uh, we have five hikes and walks uh, this evening and I wanna talk about a little, a little history, um, the hike routes and, and some directions for you to, to get there. So let's start with some training considerations. Um, some of us like our, our intrepid John is in training constantly. So I don't think John is really out of shape, but some of us have, have had a, a winter hiatus and we need to think about training. And I come out of um, not only a hiking background, but some marathon training in the area with the Loma Linda Lopers and the Riverside Roadrunners. And uh, you can go from being unfit to marathon ready in six months. So always, always think training and always, um, uh, you know, give yourself a pat on the back because you can achieve a lot in just a few months. Um, the way that we do this is to start sensibly. You don't, you don't do a half marathon when you haven't been hiking or walking. You need to do a, a one miler. Or, or even less if, if that feels appropriate, or maybe a mile and a half. But you start sensibly, you stretch, you check your shoes and boots to make sure you have good traction, good support, um, proper uh, layering. John was just talking about the layers he was wearing for his uh, 13 mile or that he did today. Um, uh, and it's important that you have uh, adequate clothing. Um, just remember the old Finnish uh, saying, there's no such thing as bad weather, just inadequate clothing. So dress appropriately. Things that you can strip off or, and, and add on. Light layers and, and maybe a mid-weight layer for this time of year. Um, you wanna do aerobic training and maybe a little bit of weight and resistance training this time of year. Um, so you're gonna be walking or hiking and then maybe lifting a few weights to kind of get your yourself into good into good shape. So um, both both types of training are good, and the weights don't have to be heavy. I have a couple of pair a pair of seven pound weights, and that's that does it for me. If I if I work with that, and the days that I'm not walking, where I may be doing some sit ups and push ups and and weight training. Um, the way that I was uh, brought up with with marathon training is that you do. Um, during the week, short walks on, on the weekdays, you know, start with a mile, then you, you know, do a little bit more during the week, but then the weekends are the times that you add, you know, a mile and then two miles and then three miles and you keep adding so that you do a, a long distance walk, maybe once a week. Um, but then doing the, the daily, you know, the shorter walks to kind of, as, as one of the trainers used to say, you're putting the money in the bank. So you do that, and that way your body is is slowly but surely getting used to this. Um, you don't want to go hiking, especially with altitude gain, just out of the box, um, because that you can you can cause yourself some real problems that way. You want to train gradually. So a good reason uh, to come uh, out to some of our flatter areas here in the chapter and in, in Western Riverside, Riverside and Corona are, are great for that. Um, why walk or hike here in, in Western Riverside County? Um, well, for one reason, it's flat out beautiful. We have good weather here. If, if you're living up in the mountains and you have snow or slush and you have reason to come down here, um, take a walk. This is a great, um, relatively dry area uh, this kind of time of year. Um, we, don't ha we have lots of flat places to walk. Uh, the elevation gain is, is subtle. Um, so it's a great place for training and we're accessible from all over the chapter. Uh, we're kind of in the middle. So if you're um, up in the high desert, up in the mountains, down in the Southwest area, we're right in the middle. So stop here for a walk. If you're on your way to LA or the high desert, or if you have errands here in Riverside or Corona um, per se, um, just join us and, and enjoy the beauty of, of winter in the inland. Um, here are the walks we're going to talk about. Uh, 
I want to start with Mount Rubidoux, which is kind of the iconic walk of Riverside and one of my favorites. Uh, we'll talk about Skyline Trail and Corona, which is a, a Cleveland National Forest uh, hike. The Two Trees Trail in Riverside's in the Box Springs that takes you over in the area um, of the Box Spring Mountains, which border Moreno Valley and Redlands, uh, a beautiful area. And this is just the time of year to go there because it's rather exposed in the summer and warm. Uh, winter is, is beautiful. Um, Sycamore Canyon, which is the city of Riverside's Central Park. Um, it was conceived in the 80s and uh, uh, opened in the 90s. It's just a wonderful preserve. Now port, and thank goodness, because now parts of it are surrounded by warehouses, but they have preserved um, a beautiful Sycamore Canyon and lots of our Riverside sage scrub area with stunning, simply stunning views and some rather uh, steep elevation gain on this one, but some stunning views of the San Bernardino Mountains. And finally, the iconic Victoria Avenue. And I've included the, the classic Avenue brand uh, citrus label here on the slide. Um, this is where the citrus industry started in the 1880s in Riverside. Um, and it's, it's a must see to understand the story of Riverside and Riverside County uh, and Southern California. So we'll talk a little bit about that as we get to the hike. Now, beginning with Mount Rubido. Mount Rubido um, was part of a rancho back in the uh, uh, Spanish and, and Mexican uh, colonial period, uh, and uh, it it was it it later became um, citrus and other agriculture. Uh, the Mount Rubido um, hill itself. Uh, is in the middle of the city of Riverside. As you can see from the little map here, uh, here's Riverside and then the 91 freeway uh, runs roughly north-south uh, through it and uh, Mount Rubido is, is to the west of, of the 91 and overlooks, as you can see here, it overlooks the city of Riverside and there's uh, Big Bear uh, to the, the northeast. And here in this other slide or this other photo, we're looking uh, more to the south. Um, beautiful, iconic mountain uh, dominates the city. Um, Frank Miller, who developed the Mission Inn uh, right around 1900, 1903, um, graded out a road uh, on Mount Rubido simply to give his um, his patrons, uh, his guests, a thing to do. He, he started with carriage rides going up the mountain. It's about a three mile uh, trail or road. Used to be open to carriages and then as cars uh, developed, uh, Model Ts and, and cars would go up there. And that road was open until about 1990, 91, and then it closed. Um, Mount Rubido is a city park of the city of Riverside, and now that road is a trail, and, and it's used exclusively by hikers and pedestrians and bikers. Um, it is a tremendous trail, and it is hugely, hugely popular, which, which warms my heart because uh, it's great exercise. It's just the right length for an early morning uh, weekend walk. Um, it is tremendously popular. So, um, my recommendation is uh, uh, get there at dawn and the views and, and dawn at Mount Rubido is lovely. Um, you'll be able to get parking. The, par the best parking is at Ryan Bonominio Park, which is a relatively new sports park at the, at the um, southern foot of Mount Rubido. Uh, it is um, large, it has uh, nice clean bathrooms, plenty of parking. Um, a, a dirt track around the park if you want a small track to walk on and uh, some garden areas that are um, preserved and, and placked out with identification of native plants. So it's a very nice park as well as it has uh, uh, ball fields and soccer fields. Um, if you wait too late till eight or nine o'clock, especially on weekends, it is mobbed. So you need to get there early and, and the dawn is worth it. Get there early, uh, do it solo or with friends, um, and, and 
take about the three mile walk. Uh, at the top of the um, mountain, there is uh, a huge concrete cross. It's probably about 40 feet tall. It was placed there. They have Easter sunrise services there, but it's kind of the, uh, the, the top point, the goal of a lot of people. There's an amphitheater there, but you can see 360 degrees. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a nice stopping point for a snack. Uh, and kind of collect yourself and look out over the city. As you can see here, this is this is looking toward downtown Riverside. Um, UCR is against the Box Springs here, and there's Big Bear off in the distance. Um, what we're seeing in these two photos are uh, um, the Peace Tower, which it's kind of a poignant thing. It was placed there after the Olympics of 1932. It commemorates, I think it was famous at the time, a Japanese athlete, a rider, rather than continue to compete, his horse lamed itself and rather than to run its horse his horse into the ground he stopped competing and he was heralded and lauded at the time for for saving his horse and it was a, me a memorial to peace and what's so poignant this is right before the war so it was it's a sad and, and, and poignant thing um several plaques on on the mountain commemorate uh kind of the I iconic people who were there at the time. John Muir went up uh, Mount Rubidoux. Uh, Henry Huntington, uh, you know, the famous uh, Huntington, Stanford, and Crocker, the guys that, that built the Transcontinental Railroad in 1869. Well, Huntington went on to build the streetcars in Los Angeles and uh, managed the Southern Pacific Railroad. So he was quite the multi-multi-millionaire. And of course, he's the one that built the Huntington Gardens in San Marino. Um, he was up there, uh, and a plaque commemorates that. Um, Roman, the one that, that uh, started the iconic uh, Roman's bookstore in Pasadena, was up there. Turn of the century, icons of the time, up to Mount Rubidoux. So this is one of my very favorites. Uh, my fitness walks of the Sierra Club uh, are, are typically on the first and third uh, Sundays of the month. Uh, and um, this is where we go because there, it is such a great route and there are bathrooms and, and, and really good parking. So uh, I would highly recommend Mount Rubido as, as a, a starting point to get to know Riverside and a great walk. So our second walk over in Corona is uh, the beautiful Skyline Trail. Um, Skyline is off of Foothill Parkway, right on the edge of Corona at the foothills and uh, at the edge of the Cleveland National Forest. Um, for those of you that, that may know Corona, um, there is a Forest Service office on Main Street, a uh, ranger's office, and they do ask about a half mile into the hike where they typically meet. Um, and they'll tell you when they're, they're doing that it. It used to be every Saturday or every other Saturday. Um, COVID disrupted it, but I think they may be getting back to their schedule. Skyline, um, it, again, is a very popular walk. It starts through uh, a uh, housing development. Parking is scant. It is on Foothill Parkway, which you see in this photograph uh, where the signage, get there early. Um, sometimes you'll have to park blocks away because it is very popular. Uh, dog friendly, um, flat. You can take a very short walk um, to the kiosk, a longer walk up to the one of the peaks that has uh, microwave and cell phone towers, or you can walk for miles along various uh, hikes into the Cleveland National Forest. The Tin Mine Trail where they were doing tin mining in the 1880s and 90s, um, there are several other loops. Um, this this uh, upper right-hand photo shows this meadow that was just taken a few days ago. Beautiful green meadow areas this time of year. Um, the lower right photo shows kind of the gypsum um, uh, uh, towers here that are eroded away. The Corona Hills have a lot of mining in addition to like tin mining and things that were in the early days. Uh, gypsum mining is still going full pelt in the hills for construction, for the construction industry. That's what drywall is made of. Um, so it's a very intriguing area, slightly different geology from other parts of Riverside. 
um, but a drop dead beautiful uh, hike this time of year. Um, if, if you see this this upper right meadow photograph, um, absolutely lovely. Um, in the warmer times of the year, uh, snakes are present, so be very careful. Um, also a lot of poison oak and poison ivy. So be careful of yourself and your dogs if you're hiking with, with your, your pet. Um, keep them on trail and, you know, leafless three, let it be. Uh, remember the old rule because there's just a ton of poison oak and poison ivy along the trail. Um, but it, it is certainly worth it in a very deservedly popular trail in Corona that'll introduce you to the Cleveland National Forest. Two trees. Two trees is behind the UCR. Um, it's on uh, the Blaine Street area. If if you go along Blaine Street, uh, kind of in the faculty ghetto area uh, near uh, UCR, there's there's parking there off the trailhead. Um, Google or a, or a, go to uh, some of the various trail sites or. Um, uh, the uh, the handy um, David Harris book, uh, A Foot in a Field in the Inland Empire, they have the uh, Box Springs Mountains and Trees and Two Trees is one of them. Um, this is the time of year to go to Two Trees. It, it can be very warm and exposed uh, in the late spring or summer, uh, but this time of year is absolutely beautiful. Um, if you can see the upper right photo, that was taken at Christmas. Um, it's just lovely verdant uh, Sycamore Canyon uh, um, leading into scrub, uh, the, the Riverside Sage Scrub. Um, it was when I was a, a young district attorney in, in the early 90s, 1990, I started with that office and I had a colleague who was from, young colleague who was from Connecticut. He'd never been to, to California or Riverside. And he said, these are the ugliest mountains. And I, you know, I said, you know, this is Southern California. We're very arid, but come come winter and spring, it's like Ireland. It's just beautiful. Um, and he, it, I think it took him some time to understand uh, our particular um, patterns here. Uh, in, in, in winter is really California spring. Uh, the wild donkey here is one of the typical um, wild donkeys in the area. We have herds. Uh, that that course throughout the Box Springs, uh, very beloved, and you'll see them in Reno Valley, you'll see them um, in uh, Redlands and in Riverside. Uh, I remember seeing them recently on a lawn over by the university <laughs> there, <laughs> grazing. Um, but there are a lot of the donkeys there and uh, you'll, you'll sometimes see them suddenly or, or sometimes you'll see them at a distance. Um, and there's the trail signage of the Two Trees Trail, uh, an absolutely lovely trail. Uh, and this is the time of year to go. Sycamore Canyon. This is uh, a triumph of uh, kind of local urban planning and, and um, local political will. Uh, our former, um, uh, mayor in Riverside County, Ron Love, or Riverside City, Ron Loveridge, uh, had a, had a vision of, of, of a, a central park in Riverside, and uh, started working on it with others in the '80s. And by the '90s, they had put together a, a, a park, Sycamore Canyon Park. And thank goodness, because. Uh, the area at the top of the park is it's 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 a it's on a slope that goes from Central Avenue and Canyon Crest up to the top of the Canyon Crest, um, which is now rapidly um, starting to have a lot of uh, warehousing. So thank goodness that this has been preserved over the past thirty years. Um, it is true Riverside Sage Scrub. It is full of rattlesnakes. So in the warmer months, you have to really stay on the trail and be careful. Here is a beautiful um, red diamond rattlesnake, which is our Riverside Corona local endangered rattlesnake. You can, you can identify it by the handsome um, kind of buckwheat sort of rusty red uh, diamonds. And then the clashing uh, black and white stripy tail. And like I was telling John and Carla recently, 
it's like uh, you've got somebody wearing argyle and stripes. It's 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 a clash. The, the, no fashion sense, but uh, they're they're easily recognizable that way. They're a large snake, and they are everywhere in this park in in the summer. So um, do not bushwhack in this park. You stay on the trail, um, and have your dogs on leash. Uh, but boy, you. Um, you can park either off of Central Avenue or off of Canyon Crest. There are two parking areas, and it is spectacular because it this is this is a um, a bit of elevation gain. Um, and boy, could you ever see the mountains and the 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 San, San Bernardinos and the Box Springs? And this time of year with the snow, it's just lovely. Um, so the parking area uh, is, as you can see in the upper left here, uh, this the the Emil Moore Nature Center, named after one of our former. Um, city council members who uh, helped conceive this park. And there's a there's a small building there that has a nature center and a, and a restroom. Um, good parking, dirt parking there off of Central Avenue, uh, just up from the town center, the Canyon Crest Shopping Center there. Um, bathrooms are intermittently open, just for you to know. Uh, but the parking is just about always open, starting at dawn on weekends and weekdays. Um, uh, and a, a lovely place to go. So it's Central Avenue in Canyon, the, the Canyon Crest area of Riverside. Um, you can see the, the sycamores here in the central photo. And this upper photo is the panoramic view of Riverside with the mountains in the distance. And it's just lovely. They're about um, 10 to 15 miles of trail. There are just many, many trails. They're shared by hikers and cyclists. Um, so you can just lose yourself taking you know, all kinds of trails all the way up to the top, some close into the nature center, um, some close to the sycamores, more out in the, in the brush. It's just a variety of places you can go. And again, this is a great time of year to go because it's so verdant and, and the weather is so pleasant and the views are spectacular. So the Sycamore Canyon Park in the city of Riverside. And finally, our iconic Victoria Avenue. Victoria Avenue is really where um, the story of Riverside Citrus begins. Um, in the 1880s, uh, Eliza Tibbetts uh, ordered a couple of uh, Washington Naval oranges from a friend in Washington, DC who had, had, had learned of them in Brazil. And this friend had, was, was part of uh, the Department of Agriculture and sent Eliza a couple of these trees. And the original navel oranges are still uh, in the area uh, behind um, some protective uh, uh, wrought iron fencing, but they still exist from the 1880s. And from those uh, two trees of Eliza Tibbetts, the, um, the citrus industry in Southern California was born. Um, Riverside, uh, rapidly developed a series of canals, the, the Gage Canal, the, the Gage uh, organized um, funding for uh, an irrigation canal through the, the city of Riverside that roughly parallels Victoria Avenue. And uh, the avenue was planned and uh, as Victorians who were very conscious of beautification and beauty, they planted out, as you can see here, things like pepper trees, roses, all kinds of uh, uh, um, eucalyptus and other trees along its 12 mile length. It's a 12 mile street or, or avenue that has a pay, a pay path on one side and a gravel path and parts of the other side. Um, absolutely spectacular. It's been zoned thankfully as low density. Um, there are still many um, citrus groves along it. And then uh, some of them have been replaced with vegetable um, fields, uh, which are wonderful. And, and there are a couple along at Madison and Adams that uh, are open to the public and have absolutely fabulous produce. Um, and they're open seven days a week. Uh, and they also have, there are also several nurseries that have been uh, uh, replacing some of the citrus um, in addition to some housing and some horse properties. So. It's a wonderful flat place for you to walk. It's ADA compliant. Um, if you or, or someone that you uh, know and love needs to have ADA compliance, it's a great place to go. 
Um, it uh, is used by the Riverside Roadrunners for their marathon training, and they, they start at the Riverside Sports Park at Van Buren in Victoria. Um, and, uh, and they go up Victoria and then into the groves and loop around and do their training. Um, a great place to get a feel for Old Riverside and the views of uh, the mountains are beautiful at this time of year. Uh, Snow-capped mountains with uh, uh, palm trees and citrus groves in front. Um, and in the springtime, the scent of the, um, the oranges is absolutely lovely. Um, my late grandmother who lived to be 104 and who came uh, to California from uh, Iowa in, in 1923, came by train through the inland she said uh, she said many times just the odor of the uh, uh, the scent of the citrus and the orange groves was so overpowering and beautiful i mean for this young young 17 year old woman from iowa coming out to california so you can kind of get a, a glimpse of that um of that history there on victoria avenue uh, another one of my favorite walks, absolutely lovely, uh, and a good place to do your your early winter uh, training for the rest of the year. So that's it for me with our talk. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. I'm going to stop our screen sharing right now. Yeah, um, um, Juliana wanted to bring up some questions that came up in the chat. Um, okay. Just a lot of comments and questions, but um, I guess there was a little concern about some of the trails um, there, um, especially the ones at Sycamore. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> they used to be more well defined. And yes. then people were going off trail to make their own trails, which right. sometimes can be difficult to yes. find your way. Uh, what's your recommendations in regards to staying on the main trail? Well, there, out of the Mealmore Nature Center at Sycamore, there is definitely a main trail and you can see about two main trails. One goes toward UC Riverside and one goes very sharply uphill and then it branches out. Um, so I would stay on the well-defined trail definitely. Um, be careful of cyclists. Uh, we have some very enthusiastic mountain cyclists there and some of them will go off trail, but um, the trails are defined uh, and, and enough for you to stick on at least the ones that are close to the nature center. As you, as you keep going uphill toward the warehouse district uh, about you know two and a half, three miles in, it really does start to kind of branch out. But I think there's enough defined trail for you to, to um, to stay in at least halfway up. Um, be uh, be mindful, as I said, of the snakes as you get into the warmer part of the year. Do not get off trail. I remember I was I was bushwhacking. Um, my spouse Maggie and I were were off of the Canyon Crest parking area, and it's a little bit of a bushwhacking situation. My good lord, uh, you you the, the trails are kind of trench like, so you'll have brush like at shoulder height. I remember seeing a snake at my shoulder height area near my head, but luckily it was like, you know, going lickety split away from me as fast as it could. But that could be kind of a dangerous situation. You do not want to be in the brush bushwhacking in the warm time, time of the year. Um, so that is my main concern there. But by all means, this is a beautiful, beautiful time of year to go to Sycamore Canyon, um, and the the views are spectacular. and And then you can go and get a nice breakfast afterward at uh, Canyon Crest Town Center. There are a couple of really great re breakfast restaurants there, uh, Crest Cafe and some others. Uh, if you for yourself or you even with friends, so a, a nice social thing to do as well. Um, yeah, uh, there was some question in regards to the uh, parking situation at Two Trees, I believe. Yes. Um, do you have to you, uh, have a uh, park or wilderness or? No, it's a city parking area. Um, let's see. Uh, David Harris has a nice take on it. It's it's right off of Blaine, and. Um, his uh, directions are 
from the 215, take uh, take the Blaine Street exit. It's it's right there near um, UCR. Drive east about two miles, uh, left on Belvedere Drive, two tents, and then right onto Two Trees Road and follow it up to the trailhead. So uh, either go to All Trails, the All Trails app, and just put in Box Springs Two Trees, or get the uh, highly recommended A Foot in a Field in the Inland Empire. That's David Money Harris's. Um, he's he's a professor over at the Claremont Colleges. He's written and updated this wonderful guidebook to our area and uh, and turn to the Box Springs Two Trees Trail in this book. There, it's there's a dirt or there's a parking area there. There's also adequate street parking. It's a residential area there. Um, great story about that parking area. Uh, I when I first came to Riverside in, in 1990, I lived in in that area um, off of uh, Iowa and, and, and Spruce there um, about a mile away, mile or two away. And if, if you go to that parking area, there's like an enormous boulder uh, there. And uh, there was a big item in the paper. A lot of people have been hiking on a weekend and unbeknownst to them, there was a mountain lion like up on top of the boulder, like taking it all in. So just be aware, um, these are wild areas. We do, it is, it is a wildlife corridor. Um, just look all around you, make sure that uh, you know who's, who's around there with you um donkeys snakes mountain lions all kinds of critters there are bobcats up in those hills all kinds of of interesting things so um uh just be aware and that was a, that was a great story and the it, the mountain lion uh was was sitting there for quite some time until somebody noticed it and they called the press enterprise <clears throat> and had a story about it a couple more comments about two trees one is the donkeys don't like dogs. So uh, be aware of that. And the other one is Chris Torres said there's a very small parking area by some houses at the trailhead of two trees, yeah. but there's yeah. a larger lot below, which you then need to walk up to go past the tiny parking area. Yeah. You know, I would say that, you know, Mount Rubido. I wouldn't consider that a nice hike at all anymore. I think it was maybe 20 years ago. I think are there I was there 20 years ago at least. Anyway, it was really beautiful scenery. There was no dog feces. There are not so many, I mean, it's just inundated with people and bicycles. And it's a very narrow trail. So I would I would consider it a blight almost. And I've actually read, I mean, I've written to the council about it. Riverside Council, even though I live in Redlands, because it really disturbed me that it changed so much for the worst. Well, I mean, yeah, who wants dog feces um, to look and bicyclists to maybe hit you because it's such a narrow trail? I, I don't consider that. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I just don't consider that pleasant <laughs> myself. Or I, I, I agree that it's it's very well loved it is huge. No, too loved <laughs> i'd say too loved they need restrictions yeah yeah uh, a good <laughs> reason to um get there early and uh <laughs> i never early. want to get there early yeah Dawn oh, yes, Dawn. <laughs> Dawn is very beautiful there if you get there Dad. nine o'clock is very very busy and i would agree um all of us need to those of us that are dog lovers and and we take our dog hiking with us uh, of course, be a good citizen and you bring bags with you. Um, people don't, and, no. people you know, don't, don't do that. They're probably, you know, everyone, you hope they will, but there are people today that don't really care. You know, there are quite a few people like that. And they don't respect parks. And they don't understand the park is for you, people that live there, and you have to take care of it. I mean, you know, it, it, uh, it really irked me. I would never go back. I've got to say, when I've been up there, I just love the diversity of the people and the fact that it's Riverside getting out. It's a community feeling, but it's also with the beautiful views. Um, the dog I, feces, sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. It's not a, a hike in the woods. Yeah, but it is. wasn't like that at one time. It was not like that. It wasn't overcrowded, overrun by people well, really and, dog and, and bicyclists. I've been there. I used to go to the Sierra Club up there and it wasn't. 
and they, well, they need regulations and they should have them and people should obey them. It's very um, well loved. But they want it, you know, if they want it trash, that's fine with, fine with me. I don't care. I don't live in Riverside, so <laughs> I mean, who well, cares? I, I think Susan brings a, a, a good point up that um, a lot of we, we need more places to hike because people obviously like it. And uh, but but they're not if they're not respecting it, they like it, but they don't understand how to like it. There's well, some people like that. So it's like, you know, they don't they're not taught because of their background or something how to like something. You don't that doesn't mean you trash it or your dog. You don't leave your dog uh, poop on the trail. And that should be, you know, they should be fine for that. It's just well, not glamorous. <laughs> it's just not etiquette. There's no etiquette to that. It's, if you see the etiquette in that, please let me know. <laughs> oh, no. The smell of dog poop and looking at it. It's, uh... Yeah, everything has to have rules or regulations. A lot of people just trash things. Remember when there's a pandemic, People just trashed Joshua Tree. They went in, it was closed, they would go in anyway. So, you know, you have to have rules for people. There's some people just don't care. They don't care at all. Well, I, I would tend to agree. Uh, as a prosecutor for 30 years, I understand. Yeah, you think so. However, <laughs> there are people however, like that. However, 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 I don't want to discourage people um, about this hike because I think it is um, a very beautiful hike. It, it's one of these hikes that uh or walks it was <laughs> yeah. that people really enjoy it and we have a lot of people that are are getting out so it's kind of a build it and they will come and that's unfortunate hey, i don't like that idea it's a, it's a demonstration that we need more we need more it seems like a demonstration that you need more strategies for rules and making things nice because who wants i want a pristine a nice looking park if i'm going to go up there I, I I just I don't respect people who do that. I just can't respect. <laughs> They're just like below the below, and you know. Well, I hear what you're saying. You have to say it. You have to say it. I hear what you're saying. Um, I yeah. wouldn't want my park. I have you know I'm from Redlands, and and we have a problem a little bit, and we have a, a Prospect Park, and it's very old park, mm -hmm. but it's a park, like. Mount Rubido is, it's an old fashioned park. It's not like um, perfectly, um, uh, no, uh, perfect brush, uh, bushes have been trimmed. It's an old, old park built in the 1900s. I mean, the late 1800s, early 1900s, the park was built for carriages, the Smiley Brothers. We have, you know, um, actually I could, I could probably have a program on our parks in Redlands are very, very good. We have Live Oak Canyon. We have San Timoteo Canyon where Indians dwelled. Mm -hmm. And the Smiley brothers were our patriarch brother, uh, patriarchs of our city who created a lot of these parks. But it can be overrun with people, Prospect Park. It's just, you know, I mean, you know, I would, <laughs> I would campaign for rules and regulations if it's overrun anymore. Okay, Susie. Uh, right. I'm sorry, but it's just, Susie, but, we have a few other questions. Yeah, that I know. We need I know. To go get ahead. To, so I know, but I had my, yeah. I raised my arm, a hand, and no one ever actually answered, so I had to answer for myself. Yeah, let's get to a few other yeah. questions. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you can. Go ahead. <laughs> so there's a question about a uh, question to Julianne. Do you have any experience? with Riverside County Park Wilderness Area off Lake Street, Lake Elsinore. You know, I have not hiked over there. Um, actually, for the, for the odd reason that there's been a lot of um, blue-green algae bloom over at Lake Elsinore, especially during the warm part of the year. And so we don't take our dog over there because it's toxic to dogs. Um, I've heard of it. I've heard it's quite interesting, but I ha don't have personal experience over there. Anybody else have personal experience with the Lake Elsinore Regional Park area? Um, so Patty. Oh, oh, is this Patty? Patty? Oh, you're on this. <laughs> you're on this. Oh, my God. Patty? Hey. Oh, I'm sorry. That's funny. Thank you. 
Um, no, I don't. But that's something we'll have to uh, maybe explore. Hi, Susie. Oh, oh, <laughs> hi, Susie. Hi, Patty. Well, <laughs> long time no see. How do you happen to be on this one? Um, we'll have to talk later. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we we'll have, have another question. Yeah. Uh, we have another question in the chat. Uh, in regards to the donkeys at Two Trees Trail, um, have you had any interactions with the donkeys not liking the dogs or the dogs not liking the donkeys? Or I know um, in most places, dogs need to be restrained. So um, dogs need to be on leashes. So what's your experience with the dogs and donkeys at Two, Tr Two Trees Trail? I have not had any dog donkey problems. Um, we've, we've walked in the area. Uh, um, the donkeys are prevalent throughout the box springs. Um, be very careful as you're driving um, all around that area. Uh, I have not had uh, donkeys approach us when, we're, when we have our dog. Um, do take a lot of care when when you're you're driving um there have been uh donkey vehicle encounters that don't go well for the for the donkeys uh but um they're becoming more and more um kind of compressed by development as there there have been more development over in the riverside area uh, to the north of ucr uh, in the Redlands area and in the Moreno, Moreno Valley area up in the hills. So we like our donkeys. Uh, they're, they're iconic to the area and, and especially Redlands and Moreno Valley. Um, they seem to be appearing more in the Riverside side, which indicates to me they've been kind of pressed over toward us. Uh, I, I had never seen them grazing on the lawns over at UCR as I've seen them recently. So I think they're kind of moving this way. Um, but uh, uh, they, I think they were suffering from, some of them had, had some kind of ailment um, that was in the news last year. I don't know what, what, what the um, result of that has been, but that was a news item in the paper. Um, I would imagine that they don't like dogs. So always have your dog on any of these hikes on leash. Um, it's just not a good idea to let dogs uh, go off leash on these trails or too many snakes and, and other critters around as well as fellow hikers and walkers. Um, I'm never all that keen to have um, off leash dogs, especially if they're big and uh, my, you know, approaching me or my dog. So um, keep them on leash for everybody's uh, health health and safety and for, for the enjoyment of your own dog. Um, Jan said that she and her dog were charged by two donkeys on the other side of Box Springs Mountain. Hidden wow. Area. Wow. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, my goodness. Uh, I guess I if you see them, don't head their direction. <laughs> if you have a dog, especially. Like yeah. That. No, I've never never seen or heard about them charging, but that's that's good to know. Maybe they felt um... and the dog was on the leash. Yeah. So keep well, your... we had we had an angry mama, an angry mama uh, donkey that had a little one, and I guess we were a little too close on the hiking trail, and she was not happy at all. Yeah. Luckily, there was a fence nearby, so we were in between the fence and the donkey. But if they have young, they're going to protect their young. And there's always a lookout, so you do have to be careful. And on the Hidden Springs Trail, I've seen an entire pack of coyotes go after the donkeys in the evening when we were doing an evening hike there. So to me, I, I would think if I'm a donkey, a dog looks like a coyote, so you yeah. have to want to protect yourself from that. So you yeah. have to, I mean, they're they're out there in the wild, and you have to consider that. And another thing is. Some will try and come up to you because people feed them and they shouldn't be feeding them. Good, uh, good, good uh, notes, Chris. Oh, and speaking of the coyotes, um, I'm sure you all know this better than I do, but uh, this is pupping season. Um, I just saw a beautiful, really healthy family group of four uh, uh, coyotes ranging just above my home. And I, I live in the Corona Hills. Um, so they are out. So another good reason to keep your dog on leash, um, give the coyotes their space because they're out and about. This was mid morning. It, it wasn't even at dawn or dusk. It was uh, broad daylight. So they are around. 
give them their space and uh, keep your dog on leash. Um, you know, you don't want a situation where they're, they're uh, predating your dog, especially if you have a small one. But um, yeah, we have lots of critters uh, here in Riverside and Corona. So as, as everyone else does too, but, um, but just be aware, everybody's out and about. Um, I well, think, <laughs> yeah, thank you, Julian. I, I don't see any more um, questions, but um, I just wanna say thank you so much. Uh, for giving this presentation. I learned a lot. I've actually never done any of these hikes, so I'm looking forward to it. Um, well, you're, you're the person I had in mind, Carla. If, if things get kind of slushy or snowy up your way and you're running some errands down here, um, you know, feel free to come down and, and uh, have a, a, a dry, flat place to walk, you know? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to take advantage of it because, um, yeah, I, I never think about going down the mountain to uh, go hiking. I always think of going hiking on the mountains. <laughs> Carla, I offer that sometimes. I do the donkey hikes. <laughs> yeah. Do a donkey yeah. hike. And the other uh, thing, and especially early in the morning, if you're out in the desert and you're midsummer where it's, it's so warm, you know, in, you know, August, September, October out in the desert, Come west to Riverside, especially if you have other things to do. Come early in the morning, grab a coffee and, and come out here and do your walk. It is, you know, typically 10, 20 degrees cooler here than it is out in the desert. Um, just a nice place to walk uh, throughout the year. So good to know. And uh, thank you all for listening. Um, you know, I've grown to love this area. I, I grew up in Los Angeles and moved out here in 1990. And it's a beautiful place to be. Oh, um, I have a question. Yes. Um, is it possible to talk to someone afterwards if someone's on this site? Sure. And not, not close it down yet after? Sure, of course. Oh, okay. I'm just wondering. Yeah, sure. I, I think we just need to stop the recording before right. we do that. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I think I, at this point, I'm going to stop the recording. And thank you very much, Julie.